please go ahead. Uh, you're live on YouTube now. Greetings from Lahore, Pakistan. I hope you all are well. And thank you so much for joining. I'm grateful. And today, uh, the very first thing I would like to say is that when we meet somebody for the first time, normally in Urdu language, we say assalamu alaikum. In Hindi, we say namaste. Then there is cheers, uh, ni hao. And there are many words, of course. In English language, we say hello, hey. Uh, but this is quite informal, and we use it when we know people, already know you know them, if they are friends. So what if you're meeting somebody, formally or informally, for the first time? The question is, how do we greet them? I'm sure a lot of you know it already. So if anybody know that, can you please help me out and tell? When you meet somebody for the first time, formally or informally, formal means the person is either in a you know in a uh, is of a senior position or you are meeting that person with the um, setting of a business or office or workplace scenario. Informal is at somebody's place um, in a party casually. So that is formal and informal. Uh, anybody? Hey Sunil. Hey Omar. Hey Amna. Uh, I believe uh, when we meet with someone uh, for the first time, uh, we normally say, uh, hello, how do you do? And, oh, that's uh, when, wonderful. And, uh, that's when the absolutely is correct. Us, <laughs> thank you, ma'am. And when a person is known to us, we generally say, um, hello, uh, how are you doing? Or how are you? Something like that. So let's say, Omber, you and I are meeting for the first time. And I say, how do you do? So... What is your answer to that? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll say um, I'm fine. How, uh, how do you do? All right. So you see, um, when we meet somebody in a formal or an informal setting, so in English language, the very first thing to greet the person is, how do you do? And the reply to that answer is, how do you do? We do not say, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Uh, very well. No, that is wrong in uh, English language scenario. So how do you do? The answer is, how do you do? So for example, Sonam Bhatti meets Sunil Nama for the first time at this forum. So if they have to interact, the first sentence Sonam would say is, how do you do? And the answer from Sunil should be, how do you do? That is how we greet for the first time in English language, the answer is not, I'm fine, thank you. The second time you meet that person in a business meeting, in your office, um, you know, at a formal place, and the person should not then say, how do you do? But if that person does say, how do you do? Your reply would be, thank you, very well, or I'm fine. But for the first time, how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? So I thought um, it's a pertinent thing that people should know. And if you knew it already, that's great. If you didn't know it, now you know it. Got it? If it's um, if everybody's clear on that, so should I go ahead with the next thing? Yeah, sure, ma'am. And thank you so much. Okay. So today we would be talking about... Um, okay, so if I ask you people to... La, 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 let's say to find something black. Can you tell? You can chat or say something which is black behind me. Peekaboo. Hello, people. Wakey, wakey. At least here at my side, it's afternoon. Can you say or type that is anything? Black behind me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you, sister. Okay, because there is no reply coming uh, in the chat box even. So anything in black color behind me? Behind you. Okay. Yeah. Seriously? 
Uh, something on top of the wardrobe? Yes, that is correct. Something on the almari or something on the top of the blackboard, the, uh, on my cupboard. That is absolutely correct. So what happened here? When I asked you to look at something in black color behind me, were you looking at things in red color? Did you look for anything in red? No, no ma'am, we just trying to find this black color thing. Exactly. So, you know, in my question, there was a keyword. Oh, my hair, my hair, my shirt. Absolutely correct. Thank you, Emmanuel, for your answer. I'm, I hope I'm um, pronouncing your name correctly. If I'm not pronouncing anybody's name correctly, please forgive me. So when I said the question, can you see anything in black color behind me? So the keyword in the question was black. And when you all started looking, you were not looking for anything in blue. You were not looking anything, any other color, but just black. So your eyes were scanning for the black color. And that saves a lot of time because you're particularly concentrated on black color. The same skill is applied when we are doing comprehension in the reading part. Most of the time when children or, you know, people read stories, some, you know, they have to find answers. They have to give answers for questions, which is called comprehending or comprehension. And in comprehension, there is an important skill that you need to know. And that skill is called scanning, S-C-A-N, scan, how to scan. The meaning of scanning is, that you look at the question and you highlight the keyword. Once you know the keyword, then you look at your text and then you quickly look at that keyword only. Then you don't read each and every line. You don't read other details of the story, but you only look through the story for that keyword which you have got from your question. And once you find that keyword, then you read those few lines and that would give you your answer. Scanning actually saves a lot of time when you are doing reading comprehension. So I am going to share a slide. I would like one of you to read the story. And then I'm going to ask you a question so that we practice this skill right now. Is that okay? I think that's okay. Even if you're not answering, I think it's okay. No, <laughs> well, okay, so let's start. I'm going to share an interesting, cute story with all of you. Okay, and uh, where is share screen? Here is our share screen. Uh, I'm sorry, but the host, um, I would request the host to please allow me to share the screen. Sir so Rajkumar, can you please allow me to share the screen? Please go oh, ahead, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, um, I would like one of you to please read the story for me. Amna, can you please do that for me? Is it okay? If your mic is working, can you read the story? Amna? Hello, Amna. Okay. Um, oh. Hello. Yes. Can you read? Uh, a hunger mouse. Yeah, ma'am. A hunger mouse. Once upon a time, there was a little mouse. Very good. Okay, I'm going to read. And can you follow the way I read? A hungry mouse. Hungry. A hungry mouse. Once upon a time, there was a little mouse. So when you see a comma, you stop for a while. Okay, can you read it again? Mouse. Once upon a time, there was a little mouse. Oh, that is wonderful. That was lovely. Thank you. All right, Sunil, can you please read the next slide? It was very hungry. It asked its mom, Mom, 
Mom, can I please have some yellow cheese with blueberries? Wonderful. I will read it once and then I would like you to repeat after me. It was very hungry. It asked its mom, 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 can I please have some yellow cheese with blueberries? It yes. was very hungry. It asked its mom, 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 can I please have some yellow cheese with blueberries? Wonderful. That is wonderful. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you. Umber, can you please read the next slide? Sure, ma'am. Mom said, Oh, I'm sorry, son. I only have red chips with red chilies. Do you want some? No, mom. They're very spicy. Mom, I just want yellow cheese with blueberries, replied the little mouse. Wonderful. So whenever you see a comma, so just like Omber, we have to give a little pause. That was wonderful. Thank you. Mohini, can you please try to read the slide? Well, I have red beans with red berries. Do you want some? Asked mom. No, mom, replied the mouse. Oh, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Just one change. Because after no mom, we have an exclamation mark. So we put an exclamation when we want to show strong emotions. So if you would only read no mom more strongly, no mom, so that it shows uh, more passion, more anger, more interest, just whatever the emotion, it has to be enhanced. It has to be doubled. Got it? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Archana, can you please read this slide? Hi, mom. Then go to Uncle Sam. He has a lot of yellow cheese with blueberries. Mom told the little mouse. Wonderful. Hmm. Then go to Uncle Sam. He has a lot of yellow cheese with blueberries. Mom told the little mouse. Thank you. Abhimanyu, hello. Can you please read the last slide? Uh, yes, ma'am. The little mouse became very happy and gave his mom a big hug. Wonderful. I'm going to read it once and I would like you to repeat after me. The little mouse became very happy and gave his mom a big hug. Can you try it one more time? Hi, uh, yes. The, the little mouse became very happy and gave his mom a big hug. Very good. Became, became, gave, became, gave. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we are left with our dear friend, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, is your speaker working? Can you say something? I guess it is not. Oh, it is. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello. We can hear you. Hi, we can hear good. you well. Okay. okay, so Emmanuel, if I ask you a question, how many dishes did the mom offer? So, what will you do? Come again. The question is, how many dishes did the mom offer? What would be your answer? What will you do, in fact? Because you don't have the story, so you just tell me that what would you do? Um, I'll, I'll find out how many dishes the mom offered. Yes, you will go through the whole story and would you also count the dishes the mouse said or the dishes mom said? The dishes mom said. Absolutely correct. Okay, so hey, um, Chetna, I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Is this the right pronunciation of your name? Chetna? 
Okay. Ma'am, it's Chetna. Chetna. I'm extremely sorry. Chetna. Thank you, Chetna. All right. So, which color of chips does mom have? I would like Sonam to tell me the keyword in the question. Mom, it is mom, very. No, no, no. Yeah, Just yeah, tell me the key. No, 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 darling. G give me the keyword in the question. So you see, the skill is to understand that how can you detect the keyword in the question? Because if you're able to find the keyword in the question, only then you will look for that keyword in the story and get your answer quickly. Instead of reading the whole story again, you just look for the keyword, right? Yeah, ma'am. Mom has read the size. Darling, the question is which color of chips mom has, right? In this question, can you tell me the keyword? Can anybody tell me what is the keyword? Color. Yes. Color, color. Yes, color, in color exactly. Sonam and Mohani, thank you so much. Color of chips that mom has. So now when you look at the story, once upon a time, no, 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 chip, 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 chips. And the moment you find mom and chips together, you stop there and then you look for your answer. And as Sonam said very correctly, that mom has, which color? Red color chips. Red color chips. So this is called scanning. This skill, is extremely important, not only for the children in the younger grade, in the early grades, but also for the adults, um, adult students and people working at offices, because at times you have to go through documents, you have to look, you know, uh, read and a lot of emails and stuff. So you need to learn the skill of scanning that first of all, you are able to find you're able to mark the keywords. And then once you have the keyword from the question or what somebody is asking uh, from you, then whatever that is, a thesis, an email, a document, a story, uh, an essay or article, you go through that quickly and then find the answer. I'm going to give you another uh, interesting story. I hope this story didn't bore you. Was it a good story? Yeah, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Yes. All right. So I'm going to um, share one more story because we have got a few new students and I'm going to ask them now, right? So let's see, where is my story? <clears throat> okay, here it is. I hope you like this story as well. My computer is somehow very slow today. I don't know. Okay, so we have, I'm so sorry, Akshada. Akshada? Is this the correct pronunciation? Welcome, Akshada. Okay, um, so Chaitna, can you please start reading? Yes, ma'am. The new park, a new park has opened in our village. Okay, that's wonderful. Chetna, can you please read this part? Yes, ma'am. We went uh, there with our school teacher. Okay, can you try that when you say or pronounce W, your lips should get rounded like W. We went, we went, we went there with our school teacher. And can you also please try, when you see an R at the end of a word, do not pronounce it, okay? So can you try and read the whole sentence like this? We went there with our school teacher. We went there with our school teacher and friend. Wonderful. Thank you. Amna, can you please read the next slide?
Hello, 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 Amna. Are you there? Hello. Uh, it it had a big pool and a very big water slide. The water slide was high, like a mountain. It looked so scary at first. Thank you, Amna. But just stay there. So, Amna, whenever you read a word, I want you to give expressions according to the word so that when somebody is hearing you and not looking at a picture, the way you read, people should be able to imagine that thing. Okay? So, for example, you can't say, my tummy is hurting. Because hurt should not give a very smiley face. So, Ow, my tummy is hurting. So the way you say it, people should get an idea what you're trying to say. So hear me out. It had a big pool and a very big water slide. The water slide was high, like a mountain. It looked so scary at first. Can you try? It had a big pool and a very big water slide. The water slide was high, like a mountain. It looked so scary at first. Lovely. Well done. Can you try to say the word mountain? Mountain. 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 So, mountain. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very mountain. much. All right. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm not able to uh, go through Akshadha. So, um, okay. All right, Sonam, can you please read? Please come in. Can you read the next slide? Okay, ma'am. But the teacher told us that... Yes. But the teacher told us that it would be fun. So after... The, the first ride, we loved the water slide. Lovely, lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, as I told earlier that I've got two more students who are sitting right in front of me, lovely ladies. And can you please both come here and say hello to the other students here? Not students, they're my fellows. Come, come, come quickly. So they didn't have internet facility, so they thought, say hello. Hello. Okay, thank you very much. Please sit down so and listen to me carefully. All right. Um, thank you very much, but I'm going to read it one more time. And whenever we hear a comma, we have to pause, right? Okay. But the teacher told us that it would be fun. So after the first ride, we loved the water slide. Can you try and read it now? Ma'am, I have to try it again. Uh, should I read it one more time for you? Yeah, ma'am. Okay. But the teacher told us that it would be fun. So after the first ride, we loved the water, water slide. But the teacher told us that it would be fun. So after the first ride, we love the water slide. Oh, wonderful. That was great. That was great. Thank you very much. Okay. And who is left now? So, uh, Archana, can you please try and read the next one? And then we will give chance to these two girls who are sitting in front of me. Sure, ma'am. Park had many shops too. It had an ice cream shop a donut shop, and a juice shop. I had kept the money in my pocket, so my money got wet. Wonderful. I will read it one more time, and then you will read it again, okay? Park had many shops too. It had an ice cream shop, a donut shop, and a juice shop. I had kept the money in my pocket, so my money got wet. Can you try to read one more time? Sure, ma'am. Park had many shops too. I, it had an ice cream shop, a donut shop, and a juice shop. 
I had kept my money in my pocket, so my money got wet. Oh, that was lovely. Thank you so much. Emmanuel, can you please read the next slide? My best friend bought ice cream for me. It was so much fun to eat and swim. Wonderful. Thank you so much. My best friend bought ice cream for me. It was so much fun to eat and swim. Thank you. All right. So are you guys ready for the question? Okay. But before I ask the question, because we have two new fellows with us, I want one of you to tell them what is the meaning of scanning? How do we scan? What is the first thing to do? Can anybody try to tell me? Ma'am, look for the keywords. Just a minute. Okay, can you please, she's going to tell you about how to scan when you read a story. So I want you to listen very carefully because then you're also going to scan, okay? okay. A story, not a human body. <laughs> yes, Moni, please go ahead. Mohini, you were telling us something. Hello, hello, hello. When you have to understand quickly the gist, you have to look for the keywords. Scanning means when you look quickly, look for the keywords to get the answers to the questions. Very good. And Mohini, where is that keyword or those keywords? From where do we get those keywords, first of all? From the passage that we are, from the question, from the question. Yes. First of all, you have to look at the question and you look at the keywords from there. And once you know that this is the keyword in the question, then you try to find those keywords in the story. Thank you, Moni. Thank you so much. All right. So um, who's going to try? Omer, can you please read the question? What is what is high like a mountain? So, uh, Omber, can you tell me, what do you think is the keyword in the question? High like a mountain. Absolutely correct. Sonam, you were saying something, dear. I'm sorry I missed it. Can you say it again? Ma'am, I was just asking, may I read it? Yeah, sure, of course. Ma'am, it has been. It's but okay. you can read it again. No worries. Okay, I would like you to read it one more time. Wh what wh is wh high like a what? What is high like a mountain? Ice cream. Water slide. Shops. So Sonam, can you tell me the answer? What do you think? Uh, water slide. Of course, the water slide was high like a mountain. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So guys, today what the basic idea was to tell you that it is important to learn the skill of scanning or to scan and which when we want to go ahead or when we want to adopt this particular skill, if we want to apply this particular skill in our reading comprehension, then we need to tell our children, our students, or ourselves that read the question carefully. Because if you're able to find the keyword in the question, only then you can go through the story quickly, ignore other old details, and find the correct answer. Got it? If everybody is okay with that, then I would quickly, before I sign out, I would like to touch one more topic. But before that, if everybody is okay with this one. Absolutely okay, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. What about yes, you two yes. who are sitting in front of me? Yeah, ma'am. Okay, there is a big nod coming from the two that are sitting in front of me too. Thank you very much, guys. Hello, Mariam, how are you? 
All right. Man, thank you. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. All right. Um, how many forms of verbs do we have? Can you, Amra? Can you tell me how many forms of verbs do we have? Okay, you don't know. And there are a lot of things I don't know, but that's okay. So what? <laughs> Can anybody tell me how many form of verbs do we have? There are three types of three form of verbs. That is correct. Like present, past, and past participle. Okay. So, uh, can you? There is one. There is one present participle also. Okay. So, how about you guys take one word and listen. Take one word and give me the three forms. So let's say let's take let's let's take a word. Eat. Oh, oh they're giving the answer. <laughs> Let them try to. Uh, Umber, anybody else? What would be the yes? Eat. Please go ahead, uh, Sona. Eat, eat, mm -hmm. and eaten. So uh, I'm form, sorry. I... Sorry. Can, can you come again? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, present uh, present tense form eat, past tense form ate, and past participle eaten, and uh, what... present participle eating. Yeah, that would be the continuation. Absolutely correct. So I'm going to type a word and you have to, all of you, you can please give me the answers through chat and you open up your copies and write the form there. Jump. Please, I want everybody's answer in the chat box. I want the three forms of jump. Type, 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 guys. Come on, hurry up. I want you to type. Jump, jumped, jumped. Jump, jumped, jumped. Okay, that was quite quick. And others, I want you to be very quick in that laugh. Laughed, 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 laughed. Okay, that's great. Well done, well done. Hello, Poonam, welcome. Drink, drink. Drink, drink, drunk. Drink, drank, drunk. Drank, drunk. Hmm. All right, I got it. Can I see yours? Drink. Drink, drink, drink. Drink, drank, drunk. <clears throat> My question to you people is, at, you know, at the end of few of the words, you have added ed, like jump, jumped, laugh, laughed. But with, or with few of the words, you did not put ed. You changed the pattern. You changed the spelling instead. Drink. Drank, eat, ate. Why? Why did you do that? How could you tell me? What was the reason behind? Can anybody yeah, tell me because, that? Yeah, ma'am. Because they do not follow the same pattern. They are irregular words. Wow. Okay. Akshada wanted to say something, but before she says something, I really want to know if I'm using her name. I'm saying her name correctly. Akshada, can you please say something? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I was saying that the, the verbs in which we add a ed, they are known as the regular verbs. And the verbs in which we change the spelling, like uh, for you give the example, eat, ate, we, we just change the whole uh, word. They are known as the irregular verbs in which we... Absolutely, absolutely correct. So Amra, did you know about regular and irregular verbs? Yep. Right. So when when you want to change a verb from present to past and you change the spelling, then they are 
irregular verbs. Absolutely. And when you don't change the pattern of spelling, but you just add ed, they're called absolutely. I'm going to type few words and I would like you to tell me the three forms. And now this is a competition. So I want everybody to be very quick and quickly tell me what's the other forms of these words. Put, P-U-T, put. Type, 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 type. Put, put, put. The second word is cut, C-U-T, cut. In past tense, present tense, and the past participle. Cut, C-U-T, cut. Cut, cut, cut. Ah. Okay. Let me tell you. Amra? Yes. So cut, put, and what was the other word? Hit. Hit. We do not change the spellings. We do not put ed. So I, I cut an apple. Where is the apple that I cut yesterday? I would not say I cut it yesterday. Oh, no. Yes. Where is the apple I cut yesterday? Why did you hit me last night? She hit me last night. So we are not going to add ED or we are not going to change the spelling. Hit does not become hot for the past tense. It stays the same. Right, guys? And they are also called irregular verbs. Okay. When a sentence has did which form of verb do we use with it? Fast. Can you give me an example? Type, 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 type. Why didn't you visit me yesterday? Very good. So when we are, when we use did in a sentence, we do not use any other form of verb, but only first form. Why you didn't visit me? Why didn't you drink your tea? Why didn't you why didn't you come yesterday? So we do not use any guess. Why did you call? Why did you call me? I did eat an apple. Lovely examples are coming. Why? What did you do yesterday? Oh, I cooked, cooked, and I cooked yesterday. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Why did you pick my call? Because I picked your call because you called me. That's why I picked it. So thank you so much for your examples. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> my next, so we are done with, the first thing is, how do you do? What is the answer? How do you do? How do you do? How, how do you do? That is for the first time. But if I meet you the second time, how do you do? Thank, uh, fine, thank you. How do you Fine, do? thank you. So for the first time when you meet somebody, how do you do? How do you do? Second time we meet the same person, how do you do? I'm fine. Yeah. Ni hao, han hao. That is Chinese. Okay. And hello, ma'am. Excuse hello. me. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. May I interrupt? Please. When, uh, when uh, somebody we are meeting for the first time in a day, and we meet the, you know, the same person, same day, second time, then we ask him this way or it is the next no, day? No, 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 no. That is just for the first time. Then even after 15 minutes, 20 minutes or half an hour, you meet the same person. So, and by chance he says, or she says, how do you do? You are not going to say, how do you do? You will say, thank you or very well. Okay, okay. Thank you. you can say, how about you? But you cannot say, how do you do? Because that is only when you meet somebody for the first time. Formal or informal doesn't matter. So even if your aunt, you come to know that your one of your aunt is coming from England and you haven't met her you know, before. So that's going to be the first time you would meet your aunt. 
Now, this is not a formal meeting because you're meeting your relative for the first time. Even then, when she comes, you would say, how do you do? And she would say, how do you do? Yes. All right. That's lovely. Okay. And the second thing we did was, what was the second thing we did? Scanning. Right? How to scan. That is, if you have a text in front of you, look, you have gone through the text. Like, you know, scanning is one skill you definitely need when you're doing IELTS. Very important. It saves a lot of time because when you do IELTS, a lot of people get bad or normal uh, band in reading. They get away with listening. Speaking is easy. Writing is very easy, but reading is tough because the passages get thicker and more condensed. So they keep on, they read the question, then they read the text. They look at the question, they read the text again. So you need to apply the skill of scanning while you do your IELTS reading task. It saves a lot of time, okay? What about the next thing that we did after scanning? What kind of two words did we... Forms of verbs. Keywords. Yes, form of verbs. That is the first form, second form, and the third form. And the third form is also called? Past, past participle. participle. Absolutely past correct. Participle. Past participle. Past participle. We also call it past, past participle. participle. Can you say the word past? Past participle. Okay, let's say the word all together. Participle. 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 Part. Participle. Part. Participle. 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 Okay, let's break it down in syllables. I'm sorry, but the students who are sitting in front of me, gosh, they're gorgeous, beautiful ladies. Uh, so they're not able to break it down in syllables. Omber, help me out. Break this word into syllables. Can you do it oh. for me? Ah, uh, yeah. It's a uh, it's a four syllabic word. Pa, si, te, pu. How many syllables? Four. Four. Is everybody aware of syllables? If anybody doesn't know about syllables, please ask me now. What is a syllable? Excuse me, ma'am. What is a syllable? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. I don't know about a syllable. Can you, uh, can you just explain me this? Sure, why not? Okay. So what is a syllable? You see, when you read a word, so every word of English language has a vowel, right? Vowel are the letters. When you say them, the air passes through your mouth freely. Your tongue, your teeth, or your lips do not block the air. Can you all say M? M. Lips block the air. P. E. K. K. G. 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 So you see your teeth, your lips, or your tongue, they block the air. But now say A. A. E. e. I. I. Oh, you, these are called vowels. The other letters are called consonants. Well done. So when we have vowel, every word has vowel. The unbroken sound of vowel in a word is called a syllable. Now, what do you mean by unbroken, Amna? Look at the word in the chat box. Teacher. How many, how many vowels it has? Can you write teachers, the word teacher in your copy? E, A, and E, it has three vowels. But if you look at the first part of the word, T, there are two vowels giving one sound, E. E and A, two vowels is giving one unbroken sound, E. E. Right? So this is one syllable. Teacher. Teacher. Let's talk about my name. Mehvish. Mehvish. Eh, e. Mehvish. Mehvish. 
Vish, E, E. There are two syllables. Om, Bir, Om, Bir. Two syllables. Am, Na. I want all of you to put your hands here. Can you put your hands here? Now, say the word after me and see how many times your chin touches your hand. That is the number of syllable a word has. Let's start with Poonam. Poonam. How many times did your chin touch the hand? Poonam. Two times. Poonam. 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 So there are... Yeah, there are three vowels because it has two O's and one A, but three vowels, but the syllables are two. Let's take a difficult name. Uh, Emmanuel. Emmanuel has E as a vowel, A as a vowel, U as a vowel, E as a vowel. So let's try his name. These are the number of vowels, but now we are going, yeah, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yes, so U and E are not given one sound. U and E in Emmanuel's name are giving broken sound, different sound. So how many syllables it has? You can also do it like this. M, ma, nu, l. How many times did I clap? M, ma, nu, l. One, two, three, four. There are four syllables. Okay, I want you all to clap with me now with the word I say. Beautiful. You. B. T. U. T. Full. Three. One, two, three. Dane. Yeah, let's do the word dangerous. Dane. Jur. Rest. Three. Dane. Jur. Rest. Dangerous or dangerous, dangerous. Three. If I add ly at the end, y is not a vowel, but sometimes it gives the sound of a vowel. So dangerously, dangerously, dangerously. So there are. Four. Now, One, four, because of the Y, we have four, four syllables. Four syllables. So, Amna, the unbroken sound of a vowel in a word is called a syllable, right? So, you can break down a word in syllables so that you can pronounce it correctly. Now, coming back again, sometimes a word can have a lot of uh, vowels. But two vowels give one sound. I want you again to look at this word, cool. Cool has two, two one. vowels, but how many sounds? Ooh, one. 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 one sound. Now look at this word, coal, C-O-A-L. There are two vowels, but how many sounds? Coal, O. Oh. Sound of vowel, O. Oh. So it has only one, one, one syllable. So the unbroken sound of a vowel in word is called syllable. So Omber helped me divide the word participle in syllables. Can you do it again, Omber, please? You did it so well. Uh, uh, the, book, the word pa participle contains yes. four syllables. Uh, pa, te, se, pu. Pa, T, C, Po. And Omber very correctly did not pronounce the letter R. Okay? Participle. It is not participle. It is participle. Participle. Oh, yes, Sona. Thank you. We do not pronounce the R if it has a vowel. I have a 14 syllabic word. Ooh, can you give it to that? Can you type it down? Because otherwise... It is difficult. Oh, the spelling is very long, ma'am. But the word <laughs> is pronounced as supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Ah, and it came in the my favorite movie, Mary Poppins. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am trying Absolutely. to find Mary Poppins on YouTube. I'm yet not been able to find it. You like, super, so you like supercalifragilistic? You'll get this song. 
I know, but I want to watch the movie with my kids actually, because in the dinosaurs age, I watched it with my parents. So now in the modern age, I want them to watch it with me. Well, uh, Stone Age, I am very old. That is why I'm from the Stone Age. Anyhow. <laughs> okay, so if there is... G. Uh, Ma'am, could you please just repeat the name of the movie which you just now said your voice was not clearly audible to me. Mary Poppins. Oh, lovely, lovely movie. Mary Poppins. Such an amazing movie. And from the same heroine, we have the sound of music these two movies are a must must watch and if you are new in this forum please let me type down the name of the movie cartoons that you need to watch to improve your accent and pronunciation um okay i've forgotten the name somebody's little kingdom i gave it the last time okay oh i will think of that again Okay, so if there is any question related to syllables or participle, please let me know because the time is up and I have to sign out. Oh, peekaboo, wakey, wakey. Ma'am, please yes. give more, you know, uh, more practice uh, with uh, the syllables and pronunciation part. All right. Next so time, how, whenever you have time, next time. Yes, next time we will have more interesting stories like we did today. We will read the stories together. I'll bring in more prep, um, punctuations so that we know how to read when we have a certain punctuation at the end or in between a sentence. And from those stories, we will pick up a few words and see how many syllables they have, okay? Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Sure. Not at all. Okay, I am going to type the name of the movie one more time. Uh, uh, how, how, yes. many syllables do we, how many syllables do we have in phobia? Okay, just give me two more minutes. Mm -hmm. I Mary Poppins. Pop, Poppins. Okay. Oh, I wrote Matty Poppins. Sorry. Mary. And the other one is the sound of music. Okay, so the word fo, o, e, a. O, e, a. How many? Three. You know what I do, Omber? Three, when three. I do it with my students, I tell them to mm. say the word without consonant. Okay, so, okay. for example, yeah. The word is Sultana. So let's get rid of the consonants. U-A-A. U-A-A. Sultana. U-A-A. Like a monkey. Yeah. So U-A-A. So there are three okay. syllables in Sultana. Chaitna. There are some. There are some. Yeah. There are some 50, 52 kinds of different phobias. Like hydrophobia, claustrophobia, acrophobia. Uh, are you aware of one phobia, venustrophobia? I have no idea of that. Please enlighten us. Uh, venustrophobia is fear of beautiful women. Oh, <laughs> a lot of men seems <laughs> must have that then. <laughs> and there is one more, uh, hippopotamonstrous sesquipedaliophobia. Okay. Are you a PhD in difficult words? No, no, not at all. <laughs> you are a walking dictionary. No, uh, this is, this is, I got it from uh, Shashi Thurur, ma'am. So, uh, uh, Shashi Kapoor? Shashi Thurur. Ah, the, ah, English, okay. the teacher of English for India, the entire country. Okay. Mr. Okay. Ompir, Mr. Ompir is basically mobile dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, uh, <clears throat> his avatar also tells that he's always on bike. <laughs> <laughs> This is the fear of long words. I, I, I think I'm going to have that soon. Yeah. <laughs> Same here. Thank you. Thank you so much, I try to stick with simple language. I try to stick with simpler words. Uh, but it is good to know that there are so many phobias. So uh, if you are, uh, you know, because we have lovely 
lovely, beautiful ladies here in this forum. So uh, if you have that, whatever name of that phobia was, you shouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, everybody. So Rajkumar, I think I have taken more time. So I will be signing out saying Tata, Allah Hafiz, and Namaste, and Ciao, and yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. There is so much thank to learn from. So much. So, thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It was a great session. session. All right. See you thank all you so next much, time with more thank you. fellows. Thank, thank you, Mariam. Thank you, Minashi. Thank you, Emmanuel. Allah Hafiz.